Hello, everybody. We are, well, before we even get started on any of that stuff, let's go right into what's going on right now. Skits, Skits the Sun, book one is live on Indiegogo. It's going to be going off on Tuesday morning at 3 a.m. So Monday is your last day to get Skits. Now, remember with Skits, we got that three book journey. It's completely different than anyone else. Now, we got three books, three covers with three variant stories inside. Let me say that again, three variant stories inside. I mean, how cool is that? No one else is doing that, but you can get it right here with us. And if you can't afford the three book journey, that's fine too. You can go over there and get any book you want. We got three different books. So just go grab one and enjoy yourself with reading it, man. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. So what we're going to do today is something that could turn into a disaster or it could be really, really cool. Hey, Eric McIntyre, how are you? Thanks a lot for showing up. We really do appreciate you. And uh, so anyway, yeah, to today's show, I, I mean, this could be a disaster. It could be really cool. Let's just see how it turns out. But what we're doing is we got this page right here. And this is Skits coming up this walkway. And he's got some stuff up here in the distance that he was looking at that was like, oh, my gosh, what, what's, what's about to happen? Well, let me show you what's about to happen. Let me go ahead and pull this page out of here and put it over here on the artboard. Well, here's the double page spread. This is the double page spread that we're working on right now. This and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to work on the tones. Now, the way I was doing it before is I was putting down some pencil marks, you know, and then I use my the old tortillon or stump, whichever word you prefer. And I would actually go in there and create the, the toning on the page before I'd go in and do the line work. So I got my drawing down, but what we're going to do this time is we're actually going to use graphite powder, okay? Graphite powder is, uh, well, it's interesting. I've never really used it before. I've always used just like a, a, a charcoal bind to put down tones and then move it around. But I wanted to try it with graphite powder, and I already know that this is going to be a little messy. So I got me some paper towels and some, some wipes. I got all sorts of stuff here so I can uh, take care of whatever's going to happen. So usually this comes in two different types. You got the graphite powder, and then you got the charcoal powder. Those are your two. Charcoal powder is your darker, and graphite's your lighter. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the graphite to get started. And a brush, a paintbrush. <laughs> I, I already can tell like this is going to be a mess, but it's going to be fun, I think. So we'll just jump right into it. Let me say hello to the chat again. Got, AC is kicking in loud. All right, well, we'll turn it down. Thanks a lot, Black Star, for telling me. Yeah, we got the one AC kicking in here. Once uh, we get the other, the permanent AC put in here, it won't be as loud. So hopefully that's a little bit better and it's not creating a lot of noise. But we do appreciate everyone. Get the three book journey. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. Get the three book journey. Don't miss out on those variant stories. I know variant covers variant stories. It's awesome, man. Really, really awesome, man. No one else is doing it. And... Um, the only place you can find it is here. And don't forget, that comes wrapped in a skits band, you know, signed and numbered skits band specifically for you. I mean, that's just that's just cool. So anyway, we got this double page spread here. And like I, I've said in the campaign, if you go over to the campaign, you'll notice that these are 20 by 30. OK, let me let me just put the ruler on this thing so you can see it. this ruler goes to 24 inches. And it doesn't reach to the end. You got another six inches. That's your 30 inches. Up and down, this is actually 22 inches right here is the page up and down. So it's 22 by 30 by 30, I believe. But we're just saying it's 20 by 30. So that's the size that we're working with on these double page spreads. And it's one big piece of paper. And um, we're just going to get into this. I, I mean, this is, this is going to be crazy, to tell you the truth. 
And uh, let me show you what it looks like. That's the powder down in there. Ooh. So probably people at home are like, oh my gosh, you're gonna, you know, practice on this page that you've already drawn out that looks awesome. And it's like, yeah, man, ain't nothing wrong with that. We'll just dig right in. Whatever happens, happens. I'll just start over and do it again if it doesn't work out. But I think it'll be all right. But let's go a little light first. You know, I don't want to get too much on this paintbrush. And I'm going to start back here. Oh, I can already see. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. <laughs> I'm going to start putting in some tones. And basically what the reason why I'm doing this is because it kind of speeds up the process, you know. It's like I want to find ways that look cool, and, but also speed up my process at the same time. And I can already tell that you don't need a lot on the paintbrush to, to get what you want done. But that's okay, you know, you can always go back and erase. I'm just throwing in tones, this ain't no big deal. <clears throat> and where I got that window open, where I have to put the AC window unit in right now until we get the final one put in, it's, uh, <laughs> there's a wasp stuck in the window and he's just buzzing around, and I can hear him. Hopefully, y'all don't hear him at home. It's kind of annoying, but it's pretty low, so I, I guess you probably don't. So one thing I, I can already tell that we don't want to do is to put our hands down into this, you know? <laughs> don't want to put our hands into it, and we want to probably just blow it off the page is probably what we want to do. So that's what we'll end up doing here. But this is awesome, man. I get to work with a brush, you know, so it feels kind of painterly. Ooh, I don't want to blow it off that way because I got this other page stuck over here. So I don't want to get this stuff on a finished page, which I'll go ahead and show y'all. Now there's that finished page right there, right? That's cool. Let's go ahead and plop that over there. And uh, we'll get back to this. And yeah, there we go. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be using a lot of blowing motion need to blow this stuff off the page here. But a little bit goes a long way with this. You know, kind of like watercolor in a way. A little bit goes a long way. But yeah, we're starting to kind of put that in there. This is fun. We'll just, uh, oh, yeah, this stuff is interesting. All right. Let me get a little more on the brush. Go. Wait. Drop the pencils. I go way over here and sort of put some of this stuff in. All right, there we go. Yeah. And of course, all this stuff is going to be in the background, so I don't want it too dark, you know. So we'll work from light to dark. And that's always the best way to go. Even if you're doing just mark making with pencils, you always go light to dark. Start out with a light sketch and then start working your way from there. All right. All right. I'm going to get a little bit more on there. Went a little light that time. There we go. Uh oh. Oh, that's going to make some good textures. Look at that. That's kind of neat. I know people are like, oh my god, I'm making a mess. Well, you know, I actually like that sort of stuff, you know. It's like I want to just see stuff get put down and, and end up with all sorts of crazy stuff, you know. I don't even know if putting this down with a brush is actually the right way to go, to be perfectly honest with you. I mean, there might be a better way. Maybe I should be putting it down with a paper towel or something, you know. That's, I mean, how we did it in art school, is we do it with a... A chamois or something like that, you know. Get your chamois out. <laughs> chamois. I've never actually seen one of them commercials of that guy for that chamois thing, but I have seen the epic rap battles version of them, and that was pretty funny. Went up against uh, went up against Ben Franklin, <laughs> Ben Franklin, and uh, Billy Mays, and the chamois guy, whatever his name is. That was, that was pretty cool. Yeah, this is looking great, man. Let's uh, check in on the chat, see what we got going on here. You need that cell phone fan? <laughs> yeah, thanks. That's 
cell phone fan. I wanted to get messy. Yeah, this is this is messy. The wasp Ant Man is around. No, no Ant Man. Hopefully, but I definitely got the wasp. I don't hear it right now. So anyway, we'll just keep on going with this. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. Paying attention, watching this. If you want to say something in the chat, if you want to ask me a question, I'll keep looking in on it from time to time. I'll probably do this one kind of like how RT Bear does his. I'll just kind of check into the chat from time to time because this is messy and it's one of those things where you got to keep kind of going with it, you know? <clears throat> oh, this is awesome. Look at the mark making I get with this. This is so awesome. Let me get some more of this stuff on my brush here. hit this line. Basically it seems like when I first start out I need to hit the line that's going to be darkest and then work down from there. That's cool. Yeah, that works. Rule of thumb and I always thought this was a good rule of thumb. I mean you know everyone's different but we learned this in school is um, when you're using a brush you always use the biggest brush you can. You know, don't go in there with a little itty bitty brush. Go with the biggest brush you can and work from there down. You know, it's like just load it up. You know, if you think you're going to use a quarter inch brush, go with a, a like a three quarter inch brush. <laughs> you know, just go as big as you can. You know, that old adage, go big or go home. I mean, that's really what it is because you shouldn't be too concerned with. Um, making mistakes right out the get-go it's kind of like when uh if any of y'all been to you know art school you know the teacher comes around and says uh, why are you drawing that one little thing in the middle of your page well it's true it's like why are you doing that you're not supposed to be doing that it's like you need to um need to think big think of the whole picture work on the whole picture all at once yeah so that's what i'm doing right here is i'm just going around working wherever I can on this and you know, wherever I feel like I should go and of course right now we're just working on the light right? working on the light stuff don't need to get too crazy with this right out the bat mm -hmm. trying not to use my left hand normally if I'm working over here, I would use my left hand. But if I use my left hand, then my body will probably get into the picture, and uh, the the uh, everything will get uh, out of focus because it'll focus in on whatever's closest to the camera. So I kind of want to keep going with my right arm here. Another thing this will help me do is help to establish like some. Uh, you know, like mark making, you know, just kind of serendipitous little marks. Uh, you know, and it'll help add detail to the piece, you know, that you wouldn't normally think you would need to do. But I'm just going to do it. See, it's like all these mark makings up in here. Let me see. Yeah, you can see that. There's like weird from the brush hitting it. Well, we'll just use that as like a texture. All right, that'll just be a texture that we can work into this rock uh, part right here. All right, get some more of this. Put some down in here. And remember, things in the foreground, things closest to the camera, tend to be darker. Whatever's closest. Now these are some big stones right here in front. And the reason why I'm putting this down here is because I know it's going to make all this mess. And uh, that's okay. So I'm going to make that mess. And then uh, I can go back you know, over it because this is going to be really dark at the end of the piece. So it doesn't really matter if there's uh, some weird stuff going on there. And I got a lot piled up. It's okay. There we go. 
once we get this to a certain point, I can kind of go back in and start doing a little of a racing and create our lines and, you know, what's in front, what's in behind. Right now, I'm just having fun putting this uh, toning down, right? And hopefully, by the end of this video here, uh, we'll have a completed toned piece that I can go back in and start doing my pencil work into. And then maybe the next video will be tomorrow and we'll do the pencil work on it. Yeah? How's that sound? Yeah. Oh yeah, this is definitely messy. But that's alright. You know? Art is messy. We're just here to have fun, you know? And making a mess is fun. Cleaning it up ain't fun, but making a mess is fun, for sure. I love making a mess with art. You know, just like junk everywhere. But I'm actually kind of a clean artist. You know, I, I remember all my friends in art school, man, they would make a mess. They had it all over their clothes and all over themselves. And then they'd walk around town with paint dripping off of them. I was always like, man, you know. And, uh, I don't know, I grew up pretty poor and uh, I knew that if my clothes got messed up I wasn't going to get any more to replace them so I never let myself get all dirty and stuff like they would because I knew I didn't probably wasn't going to be able to replace them but hey whatever you know teach his own whatever makes you feel good we're all just a bunch of bums hanging around Savannah it was a ton of fun though I loved it I love every minute of it. Wouldn't trade it for nothing. Miss all those guys. Some of them I'm still uh, pretty close with. You know, we text and write stuff like that. If any of y'all are younger thinking of going to art school, uh, this is what I would say. If you can afford it and not get into debt, you should do it. If it's going to put you in a massive amount of debt, don't do it. Because you can learn all this stuff online from people like me and there's plenty of other people that know a lot more than me that are doing stuff and they charge a lot of money for it or they, sometimes it's just free but you can learn almost anything on uh, online these days you don't have to go to art school uh, it's better to have a good drive than anything you know have uh, the will inside you to just go and do it and learn it for yourself is probably the best way to go But if you have the opportunity to go and it's not going to put you in extreme debt, then I would suggest doing it because it, it's a whole lot of fun. Luckily, I didn't go into debt. I had a scholarship, so I was okay. Otherwise, I wouldn't win. I didn't have the money to go anyway. Art school is extremely expensive. It's ridiculously expensive, actually. It's... uh very obscene i mean it's just as much as like going to i mean you can actually get a degree I'm, I'm wondering about this because i knew some people who went to like university of florida got a degree as a doctor and stuff like that i do know that the schooling is a lot longer to become a doctor but it was a lot cheaper than art school like to go to art school i, I it was i can't even remember it was a, it was a lot of money it cost uh, my scholarship was like 120000 over four years. I mean, that's and that was in 96. So that's a, that's a ton of money. It's just a ton of money. Back then, you could buy several houses with that type of money. You still can if you live in certain places around the country. You still could buy, you know, houses instead. <laughs> You'd probably make better money just buy some houses and uh, rent them out. You'd probably make better money than you would going to art school and spending all that money. But, hey, again, if you can, do it. It's a great experience. You, you basically get four years to practice, you know. That's the way I saw it. It was like I was there to learn everything I possibly could. There I go. Yeah, I need to get 
some of that dirty right there. See, so right now I got to start saying, okay, we got certain stuff here in the foreground that need to get a little darker. Yeah. It needs to get darker because this stuff is getting up in front here a little bit. So we need to make sure it stands out from the background. And remember, it's okay if the pencils underneath start to disappear a little bit. It's already there. It ain't going to go away completely. You can go back in and redo it. But it's just a guideline to start building this up. This is exactly how you build up a painting. You know, you put down an underpainting. And then you start going in with your tones and start, you know, finding where all your stuff needs to be. You know, your darks, your lights, stuff like that. I'm doing it the same way, but I'm just doing it with pencil instead of paint. Maybe, I wonder what would happen if I used my stump. If I used my stump by dipping it into the graphite. This might be a dumb idea, but I'm just going to try it and see what happens, right? Oh, look at there. All right. Well, that ain't too bad. That way you kind of get little details or something. You know, if I start picking out them edges, you know, I want them dark edges in certain areas. Use this brush, see if I can get it to. Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. And maybe what I'll do is I'll, uh, once I get this to where I like it, I'll uh, fixative it, you know, use a fixative so that once I start working on it with the pencils making all the line work, then uh, it won't come off on my hand, you know, and it won't smear and everything else. So, I think that's what we're going to do with this, is we're just going to work it until I get it to where I like it. And then uh, we'll fix it. And then we'll come back and do the pencils. I think that's probably the best way to go on this. So there. That's kind of cool. You know, you put your big, your big colors down, or your big tones down, and then you go back with the stump here, like what I'm doing. And you kind of pull out those dark areas, right? That's cool. And just so you know, this little bitty character right here, that skits. That's how big and massive this piece is. You know? I want the skits to be like minuscule comparative to what's going on here. And I think we did that pretty well with this piece. I guess something I could have done is I could have fixed, fixed the uh, the underdrawing too, so it wouldn't smear as much. But ah, who cares? You know, let's just go in here and have fun with it. Let me get a little more. Get a little more, more of that tone. There we go. Yeah, let me know if anyone has any questions. Let me uh, go back through the chat here a little bit and uh, see if anyone's got anything to say. No, you're messy. Thanks. <laughs> okay, I'm messy. I'll trade you this cow for these beans, Jack. <laughs> what technique is this? Feathering? It's, um, it's just a graphite powder. I'm putting down graphite powder. So I'm, I'm toning it. I'm basically toning the page before I go in and start doing my pencils, my finished pencils over it. Your area to darken up first. Um, well, I work from the back to the front, right? So this is way back in the background. This is real big in the back. So I started there and then I started moving this way because these things are in the forefront and these things are, you know, mid ground. So it's like you work your background, mid ground, and then your foreground.
So that's how you do it. Background, middle ground, foreground. Now there's other ways of doing it too, something that I could have done, and you do this a lot in painting, in basic painting, is you uh, you start with a mid-tone, you basically cover up your entire piece with a mid-tone grade, like mid-gray, 50% black, if you're on the computer, and, uh, and then you work from there, you work your darks from there, and then your lights from there. So I'd go in and I'd tone this entire page with paint with a like a 50% mid-range tone. And I'd probably add a color to it or something like that. And maybe a brown or a green or something. And um, then I would work from there. I'd, I'd do all the darks. I'd put in all the darks on that mid-tone. And then I would uh, put in the lights after that. So I'd do my mids. I'm going to go back in here and start redefining that, that edge there. Got my kneaded eraser. Gum eraser. I always like to call it a gum eraser, but I think technically it's called a kneaded eraser because you you knead it to, uh, you know, you do this to it to, like you're kneading dough. So that's what I'm doing right there, just kneading it. to clean it up. Yeah, so we'll go back in here and kind of pull out some of these details again. And uh, that'll be cool. I gotta keep needing this eraser here though. definitely go back into this and do a lot of erasing on these edges. You know, that's nice. <clears throat> go up in here and make some marks here. Yeah, I really need to get the the permanent AC put in this place because it's uh, it's getting dark. I mean it's getting uh, <laughs> it's getting hot. It's getting dark. It's getting hot. Oh well, that's just the life you gotta you gotta live. The hard life of an artist. <laughs> you know, it's funny, like the if you ever watch the uh the hair bands from the eighties, you know, all their music videos their music videos always thought was hilarious, you know, it's always these it's like these songs where it's like, oh, the hard life, you know, or we're, we're going down the road and we're doing the best we can and it's so hard, you know, and it, it's just tough being a, a big old singer of a hair band in the 80s and, you know, they're staying in like five-star hotels and you know, got women all around them out every day and, you know, the hard life. <laughs> it was hilarious. It's like all the... All the music videos are the same. <laughs> the hard life. Alright. I'm definitely liking what's going on here with this thing. Get a little more on this. Just dip it in there. Don't get too dark. It's just like with inks, you know, when you first get some ink on your brush, you need to test it. You need to plop it down on a piece of paper and test it. Make sure there's not too much on there. You want to get it to the exact right consistency. That's basically what I did over here in the corner on this part right here. I was like, okay, let's kind of test this and make sure it ain't going to get all crazy on me. Yeah, it's fine. edge a little bit here right now. A bigger piece. I'm just 
kind of dabbing it. You know, like get some good texture out of it that way. Yeah, that's nice. That's real nice right there. Yeah, yeah get a little bit more on there. Um, what we got here? Good time, and I just had my spuds and relax now. <laughs> hey man, thanks. Uh, you can use water-based paint over the image. Uh, I'm not using a water-based paint, but um, let me go back. Did you say anything? Okay, so um, what I'm doing here is I'm just working with graphite. You know, it's basically like pencils, but it's just a powder. It's graphite powder, and um, you know, I'm just putting down the tones on the piece of paper and then once I get the image to pretty much where I like it you know tone wise then I'll go back and uh, I'll put a spray fixative on it and what that does is it, it adheres the graphite to the page so it doesn't smear and uh, then I can go back in and start working my pencils and on the page from there and basically what I'm just doing is I'm just trying to um, put down tone so I don't have to do all of this mark making with just pencil lines. I mean, because that would take forever to do that. And I'm kind of wanting a little softer look on this one anyway because of uh, what's going on in the story. <laughs> so I, I just, I decided to try this way right here and uh, hopefully it'll work out, you know. I've already been doing it this way, but with pencils, and it takes a lot longer because I'm, you know, I have to put down some lines, and then I got to smear it with this stump. So I, what I started with was a brush, and I just kind of brushed all this in with the graphite powder. And uh, now I'm kind of going back in and start to work with some more details, you know, getting my darks in and erasing edges here and there where I need to. So... That's what I'm doing right now. Just putting down some darks. I'm glad you can sit back and enjoy us, though, uh, Foundation. Appreciate you being here, man. Let me know if, uh, you know, something happens, like the video ain't coming in good, or maybe I sound terrible. I always sound terrible, so that's just something you'll have to deal with. <laughs> yeah. Let's, uh, let me kind of bring that out a little bit better there. But I mean, you know, if you want to use water based over this, you could. You know, I ain't gonna tell you not to. I mean, you can do anything, really. That's the wonder of this sort of stuff, is like, you can pretty much do anything. I mean, I'm all about experimentation, and that's exactly what I'm doing right here. I'm just experimenting. You know, this may turn out to be a terrible disaster. I might have to start over on the piece. But that's okay. That's just part of it, you know. That is okay by me. I don't mind trying new things. Because, in my opinion, it makes the book a lot more interesting when you're trying new things. You know, especially for creating the book. It's like, if I just do the same thing over and over again, I mean, how, how boring is that? You know, don't you want to see something new every time you show up here? It's like, I'm trying this, you know, maybe next week I'll be into some inks and be doing some inking part of the book, you know. That would be cool. Again, we got some interesting textures going on right there because of using this eraser. I'm really excited by that. That, that makes me feel good doing that sort of stuff. And we got uh, Ray Ray. He uh, backed us at the $750 tier. He, uh, he purchased one of these 20 by 30 uh, 
full page spreads that I'm working on right here. So he's going to be getting one of them. At least I think it's a he. I don't know. It could be a she. I, you never know online. You know, people's names, right, Ray? I don't know. I can assume that they're male. Might be a, might be a female, Ray Ray. I don't know. This is looking good. This is exciting, man. This is some fun stuff right here. I'm gonna go up here and darken in some of these tips. I want it to kind of be dark, and then uh, gradate down with those. That's kind of the look I'm going for with these. We'll see how that goes. Looks great. Sounds good. You need cell phone fan i need a cell phone fan oh yeah well i can't because i have it actually plugged into the uh to the wall for power because doing this type of stuff with the cell phone it, it, you know it'll wear out your battery real quick so can't do it just can't do it And again, you know, since I am experimenting, I don't really know. I mean, I may find out that this actually takes longer than just doing it with pencils. So, who knows? Who knows? You know, you just got to try it. And of course, knowing what to do and how to put stuff down, especially when it comes to paints. I mean, you just got to have experience with that so that you know how... You know, that, that's the big thing. It's like, people are always like, they just want to jump in and break the rules. But the problem is they never learned the rules in the first place, you know, of how to use paint properly. So that's something that you really got to look for. It's like, hey, you know, it's like, I know you want to try new things and do new things, but you got to know how to do it before you can break them rules. You know, you got to know how to paint and or use oils and all this other stuff. You gotta know how to do all that stuff before you actually start, you know, breaking the rules and whatnot. You know, but I mean, I have enough experience. You know, what we got? Probably close to thirty years of experience doing art. So, you know, I pretty much know how to use the materials. What what'll work and what won't. You know, what'll cause a problem. So, I mean, I'm making a good bet by doing this because I pretty much already know how it's going to turn out. But you never know. I mean, I didn't know until I put it to paper. I was like, oh, what's about to happen? But you know, we're, we're doing okay now. I, I have a lot of confidence in where this is going to go. Taking some stuff out back here. Let's uh, work around this. I need a little sharper point on the. Yeah. That's looking good. I'm liking this. One of the things to remember, you know, and we're doing comic books, and yeah, there's a technique to doing just, you know, inks and you know, you do your pencils, then you do your inks, and then you're done. It's like, well, you know, this is comic books. You can, you know, the sky's the limit. As long as it looks cool once you're done, who cares how it's actually achieved, you know? And I, so if I want some of these traditional techniques, it's, that's where I want to go with it. So that's what I'm doing, you know?
we'll see what uh, people figure out, you know, like, hey, that's cool or it's not cool. I'll find out soon enough, you know, what people think. I mean, we're doing pretty good with the campaign. So obviously people like what we're doing here. So I'm happy for that. And uh, hopefully when they get the book, they'll love it. I'm excited by the way the book's going to turn out. I'm doing something that I've always wanted to do in a way that I've always wanted to do. I'm not doing traditional comic book anymore. It's just like inks and digital colors. You know, it's got, I got all sorts of stuff going on with this. But there are a lot of people who came before me so that I know I can get away with this sort of stuff. You know, Dave McKean, Kent Williams. Kent Williams is, uh, you know, he started out in the 80s and he was doing this sort of stuff where it's just like anything goes. You know, it's like, let's just do traditional stuff. And he's doing a cover for our book. I mean, how cool is that? Well, he did. We actually have the artwork, actually, uh, at the house now. I probably should do a stream and show that off. And it's because the painting is fantastic. It's a nice big painting. I, should, I need to do that with with, um, with Patrick's artwork as well. We'll do a stream where we just show off all the artwork you know, that we got from those guys. That'd be cool. Yeah, this is looking good here. Let's check in on the chat and see. Yep, let's get set still to your, that's right, that's right, how long have we been going, 41 minutes, all right, let's see if we can get this to a place, you know, that we're happy with it for the day, well, happy with it for this stream anyway, let me go in here and make sure I have certain stuff done in certain places, so that we have something to look at when we're done with our hour. That's what I like to do, about an hour, you know. Liking this, just working it in with the stump, you know, I keep dipping it in the, in the sauce, as it were. But, uh, yeah, this is cool. Man, this is going to be an awesome page, or double page, it's two pages, so I'm working on two pages right now. But this is going to be really awesome once it's done. And the trick here when you're doing this is, you know, if something's overlapping something, make the thing in front dark while the thing behind it's light. Or if you're doing it in the reverse, whatever's in front is light and what's behind it is dark, like if it's a night scene. Well, then you would reverse that and put whatever's in front light and then whatever's in the back darker. So, just want to make sure I get all my tones right here. And then I can go in and do pencil work over this. Uh, it should look awesome. Or at least it'll look as awesome as the other pages I've already done like this. And uh, y'all will be able to determine whether you think it's awesome or not. I think it's awesome. I think it's really awesome. But that's for you to decide. You, uh, you vote with your money. So that's where you will decide. Remember going over there and back skits. You know, you like what you're seeing here. Wait till this is colored. I mean, I'm just doing the, you know, putting in tones right now. But once this thing is colored, man, this is going to be awesome. It's going to kick butt. You know, I, I finish up the tones and then I do some pencil work in this, you know, line work and stuff. And then I go back and uh, color it. Oh, man, it's going to be awesome. This thing is going to kick butt. Mm -hmm. Just gotta get that line right there. You 
always want to put your darks next to your lights. Right there, create that edge. That's what creates depth in the piece. The blacks and whites right next to each other. Yeah. There. I'll have to probably back him up after I do this. He's probably a lot of this been blowing off the table. I'll get on these floors here and they'll dirty up my floors. So I'm probably gonna have to back him up after this. Let me get Buzz brush work going back up in here. Let's see if I can. And again, you know, you could probably just use uh, like vine charcoal to do this. No reason why you couldn't do that if you're more comfortable with that. And you don't have to do it this way. Well, heck, you don't have to do anything really. But I'm thinking this is going to be awesome. <laughs> man, it's starting to get hot in here, man. I'm going to turn some AC on. That's the thing, man. It's like you start getting really hot and you can't continue on you've got no show so you might just have to turn it on and that that'll be that <laughs> that's the way it is but i'd imagine you could probably noodle this forever doing this sort of work because i'm just having a blast with it you know Some of the light around those darker areas there. You know, the eraser is just as much a uh, a tool as the pencil is, or the whatever you're using. You know. them highlights in, you know, doing it with, a, with an eraser, texture and highlights, you know, mm. but then it starts to die and you gotta keep kneading it and get it back into shape, you know, these things will last forever if you take care of them, I'm sure this one right here I probably had for 10 or 20 years. As long as you take care of it, it'll take care of you. know if any of y'all have some questions out there if you want to know a little bit more oh hey hey Rosetta how are you thanks for stopping by and looking at me uh, just toning this page right now we're just putting down tones and uh, soon we'll be uh, doing the line work into it you know but right now we're just trying to get some tones down and make it kind of look like something you know, this is just a quick way of building up tonality in your piece before you do your line work over it. Uh, 
there's all different types of ways you can do this. You just gotta experiment. There's just one and an infinite amount of ways of doing things. One thing I don't want to do is to end up making this thing look too, too homogenized, which I don't think we're going to have a problem with that. But, and when I say by that, it's all, you know, you can't see any line work or anything. That'd be kind of boring. I don't want it to end up like that. I want uh, a variety of line, a variety of mark making, and that's why I'm doing this. This is just one stage in the overall process on this one. You know, once I get working the marks and stuff in this, it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. It's just the underpinnings, as it were. And of course, for anyone out there that's wanting to learn how to do this sort of stuff, the first thing you need to learn how to do is draw. Draw, draw, draw. There's lots of people out there that learn these techniques, and the techniques are cool, but the drawing underneath is garbage. So, you know, you need to learn how to draw first. I mean, it's elementary, right? You need to learn how to draw. Drawing is everything. If you can't do a decent drawing, well, then you're not going to do too well with the finished piece. Because it's all about the foundation, right? you got to have a strong foundation to build your house on, as they say. Well, that's what you need. You need good foundation skills, good drawing skills to put your piece on. Doing custom work was supposed to set up to re-interview you guys weeks ago, but Twitter kept flagging and abandoning me and couldn't get a hold of you. Sorry, man, but I mean, you got a hold of us now. We'll figure out something. It's cool. We'll get it together. There you go. winding down on this, you know, I think I'm probably gonna call this a day almost, uh, a few minutes here, I just wanna just finish up a few little bits so that we have something cool to look at at the end of this, and uh, then I'll probably finish it up here in a little bit once I get the AC turned back on, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I need some AC, it is hot. We are in the south and we are burning up hot, you know what I'm saying? What do you think of the creature in the background, all the bones and stuff, that's cool. And again, right there, see that little bitty speck right there? That's skits. That's how massive this piece is. But I think 
think I did a good job of, you know, putting in some some mark making there. I'm gonna go back in with the eraser and define some stuff, you know. But the goal is once this is done, um, let me get my hands wiped off here before I touch anything. I got some cleaner here next to the next to the work table. Um, just clean up my hand before I touch anything because it's kind of messy. But like I said, man, messy is what it's all about. So let's bring this back over. So basically this piece right here, I want it to look a lot like this piece when it's done, right? So I put down the tones, which you can see all the tones underneath that panel. And uh, yeah, you know, we got the tones here and now we're gonna do all the, the pencil work into it after I fix it. So there you go, that's how I'm, I'm doing that. And uh, I'm leaving it rough. I want a lot of textures. I'm probably gonna go in a little bit more and put some more textures with this uh, eraser and stuff like that, you know? I need to, you know, highlight some things and but that's that's just part of it you know it's like I, I want to make sure I got a lot of good textures and uh, highlight certain areas and whatnot and then uh, we'll start with some pencil work and maybe what I'll do is I'll bring uh, I'll, uh, I'll start up the camera again once I start doing some pencil work maybe what I'll do is I'll just do one area like I'll uh, look at this area right here and we'll work on the pencil work there or maybe I'll work on the pencil work back in here but that's what we'll do uh, on the next one I think so thanks a lot I appreciate everyone for uh, for stopping by <laughs> uh, don't forget to go get skits man three books three covers three variant stories I mean this is gonna rock this is actually part of one of the variant stories here right now we're working on there's a few pages that are different in each one and uh, this is one of those variants of, of the story that I'm working on so how do you like that I know I just gave up something oh my gosh I gave up part of the book but go check out skits uh, go back it have fun with it and uh, we'll see you again really really soon okay guys thanks a lot bye